be like lucid dreaming just when you can control your dreams, you know, like conscious in your dreams. I've heard there's a dream in which you know you're dreaming, so you're able to control what you're doing in that dream and you have to do whatever you wish. All I know is that you're in a dream and um, you know what's going on. If you want, if it's a bad dream, if you're getting, if you're getting chased, if you're going to get raped, you can, uh, you can stop it. I don't know actually, I'll be a superhero or... I have no idea. Be a good engineer, I'm studying engineering, so be a good engineer, yeah. Um, I would kill the person that's constantly running after me in my nightmares. That's, <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> I've got an idea what lucid dreaming is because I've done lots of weirdy things in my life and I think there's a stereotype of what people think lucid dreaming is which is partly true but it's really just the tip of the iceberg. Well it depends on how you're asking that question. If you mean have I been aware of my dream in a, a sleep dream state and done something with it? A little bit here and there but I've done work with shamanic teachers and they see everything as a dream. So this physical reality is what they call third dimension, but sleep dreaming is fifth dimension. But if you go into certain ceremonies like a sweat lodge, do you know what a sweat lodge is? So a sweat lodge is in every indigenous society on the planet, whether you look at Eskimos, uh, Aborigines, back to before Christianity here in this country, you go back 3,000 years, everybody did it. And they are like, a, it's like an igloo with a hole in the middle and basically put hot rocks in it. It works like a sauna, but it's set up as a, a sacred ceremonial space. So you go into a space that's completely dark to the point when it makes no difference whether your eyes are shut or open. And the darkness symbolises our ignorance. And you go into a space that's full of, of steam and call to the spirit world and ask for things that you might want, it might be hope my mum gets better or somebody isn't happy or whatever that is. So it was a kind of mixture of a church and a community centre going back thousands of years. But what happens in the sweat lodge is you go into fifth dimension, you go into dream space but you're still awake. So that is a, in shamanic ceremony something that I've done quite a lot of. It's weird shit. Well this is the thing isn't it, it's like is it something that you... I think the thing is we think everything's about entertainment these days, so I think a lot of people think when, if you get a lucid dream and you can do whatever you want, then, yeah, I'm going to fly around the world and fly through walls or I'm going to be a giant and wander the land or... I don't know, people tend to think of things like that. I think people on the surface tend to think of things like that rather than um, I am... I tend to be a bit anxious about my everyday life, so what I'd like to be in my dream is like me but without the anxiety. Now that's an interesting way of thinking about yourself. So if you could go into dream space and be the same as you are in everyday reality but without your anxiety, so that you learn how to do that in your dreams so that when you come back awake you're less anxious. It's almost like a better version of yourself. Um, yeah. Sort of well people don't really think about it like that, yeah. do they? But that's how I think about it. because. For me, this is the reality that I live in most of the time, so if I'm going to do something in a different reality, I want to bring it back into this one in a way that's helpful. Yeah, yeah so do you think that if you're lucid dreaming, you're having too much control over what you're doing? Because if you can tr control what you're doing in your dreams, and you control what you're doing in your life, do you think that there should be like a moment where you don't have that control? Well, that's one way of looking at it. It depends how deep down the rabbit hole you want to go with this subject. If, you, if you're getting into spiritual thinking, then there's other ways of thinking about this, about trusting the universe, or trusting God, or trusting great spirit, that maybe, like, shamanically what they say is there's the known and the unknown and the unknowable. And the unknowable is by far the biggest part of what's going on. Most of us are living in a little bit of the known, our comfort zone, as I describe it, and then there's the unknown, which is like territories that you can kind of get into a bit if you do a bit of work. But most of what's going on, we, we have no idea. So a lot of it is about trusting that if you set yourself in the direction of I would like it in my dream state to... to I'd like to open myself up to my highest possibility. That would be one way of looking at it. 
that's not just saying I'm going to let my brain do what it wants to do because your brain's a biomechanical thing that just churns over the shit of the day. It's not really... It is a kind of way of rearranging things. I mean, there's all kinds of research on this about how the... You know, like how RAM works on a computer. Yeah. It kind of dots things about all over the place and then when you defragment it, it kind of puts it all back in together. That's kind of what your brain does a bit when you're asleep. It kind of works out where to put things. But I don't think that's the same as dream state and whether a dream state is a form of reality. I mean, that's the interesting question. I mean, this is the matrix. You've seen the matrix, haven't yeah, you? Yeah. The question is, which one's the reality? Or are they both realities? Or what's, you know, what? Where's the bit in between, and why would you want to flick between those? So it's a deep subject that you've got going on here. And you're starting to get the look of, like, the maybe this is too big. So you have to, you have to decide what your agenda is that you want to find out, and why, why lead it by your interest, what you want to find out. But you're asking big questions that are going to take it into zones that you're not familiar with. But that's good, to find something new out. Mm. Okay. But you don't quite know how <coughs> to ask yet to find something else out. So you're hoping to get something back from the person who's talking to you. Yeah. Did you have anything? Any other questions? Uh, no, I think we've covered all of it. Yeah, well, give us something to think about anyway. Thank you.